We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors. We lost our new Leopard 50 catamaran to fire, so we began our search for the perfect performance catamaran for selling us around the world. After four decades of selling experience, we are very clear about what we want. So join us as we explore new horizons, stretch the boundaries in yacht design and build the ultimate catamaran. Jump on board for this adventure and together, who knows what we can achieve? Because <laughs> life is better barefoot. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Barefoot Doctor Sailing. We are in Dubai and we are looking at an exciting new possibility of aluminium boats built by Portofino. So guys, for everybody watching the last episode, you'll know that we're starting to get really excited about this because these Portofinos have ticked off an awful lot of our wish list items already. It's fire safe because it's aluminium. It's tough because it's aluminium as well. It's got a front cockpit. It's got a lifting platform. It's beachable with mini keels. It doesn't have lifting keels at the moment. It has a flybridge as well, and it has efficient power systems. It came along with some amazing extras as well, like the front trampoline ladder leading down to the water, the watertight diving room, and the transom doors that lead directly from the rear cabins onto the transom steps. There is also quite a unique kitchen unit that can fold away underneath a cockpit seat that looks really impressive. The things that we still have to work out here are can we get a lifting keel and can we get lifting rudders to allow us to beach this boat as we wish and that will also achieve the shallow draft requirement that we desire. The other big ticket item here is performance. So we have to start talking in detail about what sort of performance are these boats going to achieve and do we have to make any modifications specifically to achieve that end. So let's have a bit more of a talk with Raffaele about some of the specific items in the boat and let's go forward from there. During my experience in 30 years of sailing around the world, I faced uh, sometimes uh, some problems, sometimes just some dream to have something that was not uh, available in the boat and I was sailing with. And uh, for example, to have a boat uh, with uh, a retractable keel, but not uh, with uh, something dangerous. So we need something that in case of impact, uh, avoid to need the, the help of people then probably that time will be far away from you. So the boat needs to be easy and need to be safe. One of the most important things is the retractable keel that allows you to go in the shallow water. But in the same time, our system is really, really, really uh, clever because in case of impact, the keel closed and nothing happened to the boat. And this happened because uh, when I was working on uh, a 42 sailing boat with a retractable keel. Uh, this boat, uh, fortunately, when I was not on board, uh, had an accident uh, and I take three months uh, on the dry dock uh, just to remove the keel uh, damaged by the impact. Uh, and uh, from that experience, uh, I think the system was wow in terms of uh, how strong it was, how easy it was to open and close the keel. So the, the system was really well designed. But in case of impact, it was a disaster. And the dagger board is going to be even worse because if you have an impact on the dagger board, I don't know what happened. In the, in the best of the case, you just broke the dagger board. But if you damage even the hull, the boat is going to be stopped for a long time for a, an important repair. That is what exactly we want to avoid. The target of our customer is to leave on board and sail without headache and without big problems. He says he can do it. So Out of aluminium. Quite amazing. Mm. The power system is made by DC alternator fitted on the main engine. For a 10 kilowatt power, you need a four cylinder, two liters engine. The engine of the boat is a four cylinder, two liters, each one. So why we need the third engine? If we have already two engines, similar, exactly the same size, the same shape. Plus, the benefit to have a DC alternator, not an AC alternator, is to store all the power that you can generate and you cannot use instantaneously. Because example, you have 10 kilowatt generator AC. If you use 2 kilowatt, the other 8 kilowatt you cannot store. So your generator becomes a 2 kilowatt. 
But with our system, then we have a DC generator and huge battery bank. Whatever you are not using it in that moment, uh, it will go in the battery. So if you use 30% of the power of the generator, 70% of the power you will use later because that power will be saved in the battery. And in the, f in, in the end, uh, this allows you to use the generator much less hour per day. So if the other generator you need to keep on if you want the air conditioning on 24-7, our generator in 3-4 hours, 6 hours per day, you can generate the power you need for the full day if you use the air conditioning. If you don't use the air conditioning, with few hours of engine you can generate the power for a week of sailing, easily. Do you want to say that again? Both engines for a few hours can generate the power for fridge, light, pumps, toilet, every whatever, every day for a week. If you use the air conditioning, then of course it's a big load. You need to run the generator for uh, at least 3-4 uh, hours uh, to get 8 hours of uh, air conditioning on in the night. So before you go to sleep, uh, you run your generator, sleep with air conditioning and enjoy the boat in the total silent, quiet. Mm -hmm. That is the benefit of the DC alternator with the lithium battery bank. Mm -hmm. then we start from 30 kilowatt above, so it's a really big battery bank. Mm -hmm. With a solar panel on the roof, you can absolutely generate the power you need. Mm -hmm. So it can be a complete green boat. Solar panel costs money. The work of one day of solar panel you can do in less than an hour with this generator. The running running of the engine is going to be enough for the service of the boat, all the, all the house uh, power you need for the day. So these DC chargers are real game changers and because of lithium is able to take the power very fast, it is very useful and, mm. and efficient way to go. Very exciting. It is. So our boat is really care like a finishing of a, I want to say like nice car. So everything is painted and we make the fairing, the fillering and the paint like a luxury boat. There is the idea that the aluminium boat is a, is a boat that look ugly but always a very strong one. Now we combine the strong boat with a very nice finishing. I have to say thanks to the lot of manpower we have here. We painted boat in the last 15 years, uh, even uh, for major uh, company like Ferretti Group. Uh, and we have very good stuff for painting. And the full painting of the boat uh, here can be done, uh, and we can care finishing much better than in uh, Europe, where the manpower costs uh, significantly more. Well, Raphael tells us that an option you can have on the Portofino is a bow thruster, which we didn't have on the 50. And now, this isn't just, sorry, this isn't just the, the traditional bow thruster, it's a jet thruster. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't have a propeller and a big shaft through the hull. It is a, it's a narrow pipe, um, I think only like two inches, that sort of diameter, mm. and it blasts water at high pressure through a pipe and out the sides of the, the bow which then obviously acts as the bow thruster. So this has the advantage of not having to have those big cutouts and you don't have the internal propeller that drives the water and it's much more efficient. Mm -hmm. So he is quite able to fit those on the boat with either with both bow and stern thrusters if you want. Obviously uh, with a catamaran you don't really need the stern thrusters in my view. But to get stern thrust all you do is you turn the rudder one way and then give a, a blast of the power and it pushes you that way, turn the wheel the other way, blast of the power and it pushes you the other way. So that's as long as your propeller is in front of your rudders, which but on some boats it's not. We've had a bow thruster on one of our previous boats, canal boat, and it was so good. You just me and it, it was really good. Jet thruster does sound like a very interesting option that is being offered on the Portofinos too. Mm. The other important issue that we needed to address with Raffaele is how long would it take for a Portofino to be made? And in simple terms, it was going to be a two year time frame. So if we order a boat at any time, we would expect a boat to be delivered in 24 months time. So let's go back to this Excel spreadsheet, which discusses the different issues on our wish list. 
and the Portofino obviously ticks all of them now with really the performance being the one thing that we don't yet know about. It is interesting when you look at the performance cats, none of them, that is absolutely none of them, do have fly bridges. And this issue became very evident when we had discussions with the designers because as we were talking about our desire for a high performance boat, the immediate issue was if you want a high performance boat, you need to get rid of the flybridge. Specific reasons for this is the flybridge adds extra weight high up and it also pushes the boom higher up the mast. So you have increased windage, you have reduced sail area and you have more weight all features which significantly affect performance. So at this point we had to make a difficult decision to say were we prepared to sacrifice the flybridge if we wanted to have a high performing boat. We took some time to think about this but the answer came back a high performance boat is much more important to us than being able to sit and drink cocktails up on the roof and even with the saloon roof there and no flybridge we could always have cushions up there and use it anyway so with that in mind portofino produced some proposed drawings for us with no flybridge and here it is again the sleek lines of the 47 are there there's a front cockpit all the other features are going to be included and the shoulder that gives you narrow hulls through the water but more space and more buoyancy should you dig your bows in are very evident on these photos. This is a drawing of the proposed boat with the three different foresails, the Code Zero, the Genoa and the Stay Sail. If we're looking for a performance boat, this was the rig that they were proposing that we include in the boat. So we then got into very deep discussions about how to improve the performance of the catamaran in order that it rises up out the water and gets onto a plane at lower speeds. And this was something that I'd had experience with my performance cat in Australia because this boat was able to sail very quickly and it rose up out of the water in surprisingly low winds. Although the hull speed was only about eight knots, quickly rose to 10 or 12 knots if you had even 12 knots to 15 knots of wind. So while the traditional hulls are semi-displacement type shape, which are not really designed to plane easily, the racing boat tend to have flatter hulls, less rocker in them, and also hulls that have the water flowing out the stern much more smoothly and easily to reduce the drag should you get into those higher speeds of 15 to 20 knots. These discussions were taken on board by the design team with Emilio at the lead. He came back to us with progressively more aggressive hull shapes in order to achieve high performance in this cat. So here is the internal layout of the boat and if we look at the layout of the hulls downstairs, you will see two complete engine rooms in each hull. So these are dedicated spaces, completely watertight. This is one of the key features that Raffaele was so keen to have on his boats so that in the event of maintenance, it was easy and safe with good access to all parts of all the engines. You can see the diving compartment is even larger on this boat than it is on the 47. So that again is another completely watertight area. And in these first designs, the owner's cabin had a transverse bed, but in the guest hulls, the berths were inside the hulls, which meant the forward hull actually had a relatively narrow bed. This was the case in the Garcias, but my preference was to create a transverse bed for the guest cabin to give them more space in the hull. So we went about moving and redesigning the forward cockpit to allow space for the guest cabin to be transverse and create that extra space in the forward cabin on the guest side. This will also give us a double lounging area in the front cockpit like we had in the Leopard 50. If we now look at the saloon area, the galley is on the port side with the full size fridge at the rear. There is an island unit for extra storage and workspace with the forward facing nav station, which can also be used as the helm position. While this picture does have a wheel there, one of the options Raphael can give us is an electric tiller, which is simply using a small joystick, steer the boat from that position. This avoids having a wheel cluttering up the saloon area and increases the space available. The cockpit area is fairly standard, but on the port side, we will have a large daybed, which should be nice for relaxing in the shade. 
Another interesting issue that Raphael did agree that he could do was airtight voids. These are trapped air that will not escape even if the boat is submerged and are completely separate to the watertight bulkheads. This provides additional flotation if the boat is flooded from below or above and provides what I consider to be really essential safety measures for ocean going boats. Portofino does seem to be able to provide these without creating significant extra weight in the boat. Well guys, we have left Dubai and there's some really exciting possibilities here. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Rafael and Portofino is able to do a lot of the features that we're looking for. Obviously we've had to agree that we're not going to have a flybridge if we're going to go with Portofino. So that's a, a, a compromise that we've obviously been prepared to make. Still, the big thing is what? The big what, what, thing, what's the big thing, honey? The big thing is still performance because we really don't want to take a sideward step. We don't want to do all this hassle of getting a new boat, spending more money, and it just perform only a few knots more. We need to we need to get those. What yeah. are they? What are they called? VPPs, Velocity <laughs> Prediction Program. So this is a program you put all the data of your boat and the hulls into this program and it spits out the performance data with the different sales that you have. So because this is so important to us, we think we need to do this. So we are going to get the VPPs done for this boat with these hulls that have been modified significantly by the design team to increase performance. And we will uh, wait and see what they show. We will certainly, we have made the decision that we will not commit to anything until we know how the boat will perform mm -hmm. so this is a fairly major thing for us and that process takes some time is we it ready yet <laughs> so we have to wait we have to wait and again be patient to have this data put through the program and then see what the results come out like so stick with us guys we have to wait a while for that we will share those details with you in the next episode Hi guys, we have an exciting announcement to make. We are going to do a live YouTube reveal of the Portofino 52 Polars on the 12th of February. This is so exciting, we want to share this with you. So check on the screen for your local time and join us when we reveal the Portofino 52 Polars to the world! <laughs> so on that note guys, uh, signing off the Barefoot Doctors here and I'm really excited. Yeah, this is looking really promising. So we'll see you in the next episode and hopefully we'll have VPPs and polis. Very exciting stuff. See you later, guys. Bye for now. All the best. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you like what we do, show us the love and hit the like button. Then hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on your regular fix. Then kick off your shoes and you can come barefoot with us.